Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about diagnosing your ESC beeping problem. It can either be the APM or it can be the ESC. So I'm constantly helping people in private chats, in comments, and in my YouTube videos as well. And uh, I thought I would just make this video and basically put everything that I do to get my ESCs working again into a little video. Um, I'm going to do something cheap here as well. I'm going to include my address for the first time in my description and ask if anybody's really kind out there and can donate me their broken ESCs. They don't need to be working. I don't want working ones. They have to be broken. They have to have the syndrome where you've tried all these steps and it keeps beeping. You ordered yourself a new ESC and got it working again and you just don't need this guy anymore. If you can just throw it in a normal letter and uh, doesn't need to be wrapped up or anything and um, yeah that'd be really cool so I'm gonna jump into the video and I do apologize for the donation plug it's just that I need the broken ones and I don't really want to start frying my own the same way but anyways I'll get into the video thanks alright so I'm gonna be working with the APM 2.8 in here but basically uh, it's the same thing as the original factory OEM uh, CX20 APM except the plugs here would go for the motors output would be white on the bottom and would go one, two, three, four. And that's for your motor outputs. And then on this APM here, it goes in this order, one, two, three, four. And then the order here would be one, two, three, four. So you're gonna need that information after. So I'm gonna start diagnosing this problem here. So let's say you plug in your CX20 and all you get is this. So you can tell one ESC is not working. All right, so you can try arming it. Sorry about my disgusting nail here. It's gonna rip off eventually, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna, so as you can see only this motor here is not turning. Try it again. All right. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, refine all the centers for these buttons here. So just turn on your remote. And then just move up and down. So if I move down once, it should just beep like that. So I'm gonna do it again, down. This time I'm gonna go up and up again. Once you hear that tone, go up one more time and then back down one time and then do the same process for all of these. So you're gonna to wanna to find the center for these guys. All right, so the next step, all right, so this time put SWB down to one, pull this guy up and push the power button on. These three lights will be like that. Now go around in a circle with both remotes, doesn't matter how many times you do it. Just make sure you get every point. This time when you're done, Find the center on this guy here, and then push this to zero. Next, we're gonna go into Mission Planner. All right, so connect your USB to your CX-20 and connect to Mission Planner. mind that my thing's upside down this is another project I'm up to but that doesn't really matter right now so go to initial setup go to mandatory har hardware radio calibration and you're gonna want to do a calibration so turn on your remote the light on the receiver should go solid keep in mind you're not plugging in the battery just the USB right now then push calibrate redo it all. So just go around in a circle again or up and down, left or right. Make sure your numbers are changing. And this time leave this guy down. I don't think it matters right now. You can do these buttons too if you want. But that's not what we're after right now anyways. What's important right now is the throttle. Alright. 
click when done. Okay. Just for the next step as well, you may as well get this one over with as well. Go to config and tuning. Go to standard params. And for arming check, set it to disable. And then write your parameter. All right. So unplug your USB cable and uh, plug in the battery for the uh, CX20 and see if we can get it to go. Right now the shell should still be on. You shouldn't have to take the shell off yet. As you can tell, it's still beeping, so it sounds like we're most likely not going to fix this issue. Get rid of those ugly things. So turn on your remote again. Arm it. And pull throttle. So it's still beeping, so obviously what we just did there didn't work, but it's a step you should try anyways. So the next step we're going to want to do now is open up your quadcopter. All right, in this step, before we determine it's the ESC, let's find out if it's the APM. Because if the APM is fried, and I have had other users on YouTube uh, confirm, and I also know as well, that when the APM fries on just one of the outputs, you're going to get exactly the same beeps. So the easiest way to do that is just swap the two outputs around. So we know it's number two. So we're just going to swap it with the next one over, with number three or with number four. It doesn't really matter. I suggest trying it with different ones just to confirm. So try swapping it with number four first, and then try swapping it with number three. So what will happen is, is if when you swap it, the same motor is going to continue beeping. If it doesn't, if it's a different motor that starts to beep, then it means the APM is bad. And then I would go around and find out, say, if this one's number two. So this number two guy here, I would try every single motor into that slot just to confirm it's actually the APM that's fried. Because what will happen is each motor will give the same beeping sound. So I'm going to remove number two. With number four. So now what will happen when I plug it in, this guy should keep beeping. If it doesn't, that means the APM is bad. If you can tell, it's still doing it. So it is this motor that's buggy. Right. So in this case, I'm making this artificially. So what I suggest doing too, before you do an ESC calibration, is just make sure all these wires are connected. So look in here, just kind of push down on the white one, make sure it's in place, make sure that's fine, and do that for each. So in this case, I'm doing it artificially, and this can actually happen. So if I push this white down, it stops. So instead of me wasting money and time, all I had to do is push this white cable down just a little bit to make it stop beeping. And that's how easy that was. All right. So the next step now is doing an ESC calibration. Right, in this part I'm going to show you guys how to calibrate the ESCs, which I think is the safest way. Find yourself either um, a USB charging cable for your phone or something like that, a power brick, or um, a USB cable right into the computer. And remove um, the power module, or if you're using this cable here, that's... Uh, coming off the motherboard that would plug into port B. So just unplug the power module. This is important because if you don't do this, you run the risk of uh, screwing up on your ESCs almost instantly. So it's up to you if you want to take convenience over kind of like safety. Um, it's a number, it's a gambling game because I have done it originally without doing that and I've never fried an ESC. But I was helping some guy on my YouTube channel and he ended up frying one of his ESCs. 
All right, enough babbling. So take out your power module or take off the power source off the board, either or. The only power this APM should have is from USB. So I'm just gonna plug in a USB cable into the side. You can plug it in underneath the quadcopter. It's important before you do this that you follow the other steps of calibrating the remote in Mission Planner. So my USB cable will just get plugged into the side of the APM eventually. And I'm just going to use a power brick. You also need your battery. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. And you should have your uh, remote ready. So I'm only going to really show this button here because that's all you really need. Maybe I'll take off this guy. All right, so follow these steps the way I'm doing it. If you end up not getting the two beeps right off the bat and one of the motors keeps beeping on you, once I tell you guys to move your remote up, say if one of the motor keeps going beep, 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 don't push this down and push it back up thinking you're going to fix something because what can actually happen is one of the motors or one of the ESCs can go into programming mode and what you're actually doing is setting settings. So every time you go up and down, you might actually be going through a menu and you might be changing things. If you want more information on that, follow the uh, programming ESC step-by-step -step I made. It's not for this quadcopter, but it'll let you understand what the beeps mean at least. I have no idea on this one yet. But anyways, all right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is plug in the APM. So the lights are on. I'm going to move it down like this just so you can see this button and the red light. This is just in case you don't have these two lights here. So what you're going to want to do is turn on your CX-20. The light on your receiver should go solid. So you're going to want to arm it. You're going to want to have that other battery handy. Okay, so you're going to want to arm it now. Now the light up here is going to go solid and you're going to want to go full throttle. Now you kind of have a time limit here, so kind of do it quickly. Plug in the battery. It'll make that beep sound. So if you end up getting this weird sound, don't push it down again. Because right now, one of the ESCs actually went into a programming mode. Now if you can hear the beeping, the one went beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 four beeps. That, that one's actually in a programming mode. So if I happen to push this down, I end up going into a different menu. Now if I happen to hit the default menu, it actually automatically sets all the defaults to it. And because these ESCs aren't open source, we don't know what the uh, menu is. So I would suggest if it's like this, just unplug it. Kind of happy it did that because at least I got to explain that. So if it happens, just unplug the battery, unplug the cable, the USB cable from the power brick or the APM and try again. All right, so I'm going to try it again. This is, uh, you're going to have to keep trying until you get those two beeps right at the beginning. So everything has to be uh, a motion. So first plug in the APM. Turn on your remote. Arm it. Wait for that red light to go solid up in the corner there. Go full throttle. Plug in the battery. Those two beeps there. And push it down. And that's it. After you hear that musical tone there, and if it's all quiet, you can move your throttle up. And all the four motors should turn at the same time. Noticed I got lazy and replayed another video I did with the ESC calibration, but that's fine. So let's say after you do the ESC calibration and you can't do it because the motor just continues to beep, here's the final thing you can try doing just to see if we can get it to work. 
So again, it's the same process. Make sure you don't have the power module installed or this cable here coming off the CX20. Unplug this from your receiver. So no power should be going to this APM or whatever except the USB. So unplug the USB cable here or you can do it from underneath. And on this APM, just plug in the USB cable here on the side. All right, so let's prep this up. So we know it's number two, as I said before. So I haven't switched them around yet since the other video. So here's my number two that goes to this ESC here. Now what we're going to want to play with is this guy here. If you can solder and you're really having problems with it, it's kind of better to, to unsolder the positive wire on each corner of all the good ESCs. This way you can only hear just this guy beeping. But it should go quiet anyways once you push power into the APM. But anyways, so unplug the E, T, and R cable from this guy here. And what we're gonna wanna use is number three. Not number, not B or not number one. All right, so plug this ESC here into number three. I usually suggest using the throttle, and the throttle is T. But I've, I've had better experience using the gimbal. So we're gonna go into number three here for this ESC and then we're gonna plug in the battery. So I'll get the remote, or not the battery. Well, we'll need the battery too, actually. It's gonna get a little messy here for a second. All right, so we have the, uh, plugged into the number three here for the gimbal for this ESC, and uh, we're gonna be using aux too. So the same steps. This most likely won't work all the time, so you still might have to try the throttle. So I'm gonna try this one time if it doesn't work then I'll try the throttle. So plug in the battery. Turn on your remote. Move aux to all the way full. Plug in the battery and then turn it down. And then uh, wait a couple of seconds and see if it goes up. If you hear that tone, that means it's in programming mode. So don't bother doing anything with it. So just unplug it. All right, so it didn't work with the gimbal, which uh, it has worked for me before. But now we'll try T instead. So unplug this guy here. And plug it into number, no, not number, but plug it into the T one. Right, so again, it's the same step, except this time we're not using the aux, we're gonna be using the throttle. So plug in the APM. You can try first with it down. So we'll turn on the remote, and then go full throttle with it. Plug in the battery, see if there's two beeps, then push the throttle all the way down. And it looks like we got it that time with the throttle. And there you go, now it's working again. All right, so now to confirm it, you'll wanna unplug it now and then plug it back into the APM. You gotta unplug the USB power and then plug in the minus B cable. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that with plugged in. So you wanna plug these guys back in as well. If you're using if you're using your B cable here, if I can get there, plug this guy back in as well, because we're not using a USB now. And plug in the power module. Alright, so it's all good. 
All right, my phone kept on running out of memory, so the last step here now is just to plug this guy in. Turn the remote. And arm it. So if it's working again now, you got that far or whatever, right? now I suggest taking a couple of steps back and doing an ESC calibration because we calibrate it directly through here, the PWMs might be just a tad off. So now just do the proper calibration again. Now, usually what happens with the ESCs, if it is still beeping on you like crazy, most likely it is fried. Possibly you plugged in a USB cable into the CX-20 and the battery at the same time. It's known for them to blow. You can try taking a good uh, one of the good ESCs and taking the capacitor off and swapping it just to see if it is the capacitor but then you might do more damage to the other one as well so that's going to be totally up to you guys and um, yeah so basically we've tried everything that I can think of to get the ESCs to work again so if it is keeps beeping on you you're going to have to order another one I suggest taking a picture before you swap it out because the color codes are going to be basically the same anyways, especially if you get the same uh, ESC. So just take a picture and then just swap it out. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do. All right, so hopefully this video helped you guys out to determine if you need an ESC or an APM. So if the beeps do follow the motors, that means your APM is fried. So you're going to have to get a new APM. And uh, yeah. But you can hit me up on the comments and we can try some other things. But I think I covered everything in this video, hopefully this time. And um, yeah, so thanks for watching. And uh, like and subscribe. And that's it. Bye-bye.